This video is intended to help users understand categorization of columns for the punching shear check in ADAPT Builder. The punching shear check includes four different categories for columns, and these include the, an interior condition, which is a four-sided critical section, an end or edge condition, which is a three-sided critical section, and a corner condition, which is a two-sided critical section. And in some specific situations, when you have openings near columns, an interior column, or what you think might be an interior column, is actually going to be categorized differently. And that's the intent of this particular video, is to kind of show how the program is checking that type of a condition. So in this model, we have uh, overall 55 by 75 foot slab. There are several uh, re-entrant corners, and kind of the, the edge kind of jogs around here. Uh, we have two main column sizes. We have a 32 by 16, which is mainly used out on the perimeter, and then we have a 22 by 22 square column used on the interior in four conditions. So there's a, a column 13, 14, 16, and 6 are both are all um, square columns. When the program checks each column for categorizing it in terms of the punching shear, it looks for certain things. So for example, column 3, 2, 1, and 5, because they're touching a corner condition, but they're open above, to the right, and below, these are going to be categorized as end or edge conditions. So conservatively, the program, if we were to take a, a dummy line and we were to extend that line outward, the program is using that line as kind of the boundary for the critical section. So the program would create the critical section um, up to a line extended outward from this corner. The same thing here if we extended an imaginary line outward from this corner uh, to the uh, left, that would be the boundary for which the, um, the program would use in determining that critical section. So none of the area above this region here would be accounted for in one of the directions um, and in the opposite direction, if we took a, an imaginary line downward this way, none of this area would be accounted for. So this, these are conservatively checked as three-sided critical sections, columns 3, 2, 1, and 5. And we'll show where to find that information in a moment. If we look at column 6, column 6 is an interior condition. The program will check the distance from the face of the column um, outward each direction, and if that distance, uh, which is eight, or I'm sorry, four times the slab thickness, in this case that's eight, so a distance of 32 inches, when it checks 32 outward, if it doesn't fall outside of a slab, then this becomes an interior condition. Column seven would be an end and edge condition. It's similar to the columns five. Uh, one, two, five, and three, which are up on the upper edge, and then we have a, the exact same condition here for 10 and 9. These are end edge conditions. Again, when the program checks inside, it sees that there is slab there. To the left, there is slab, or to the right, there is slab. To the left, there is slab. But when it checks that distance four times h, in this case, the h is 10 inches um, from the uh, bottom side of the column downward, this is outside of the slab, so the program knows to categorize this as an end condition and an edge condition for both of these two columns. The end edge just simply means that when the program checks bending, if I look at a column, you can see the local R axis is pointing in the global X direction and the local S is pointing in the global Y direction, so bending about the R axis would be um, this would be the end condition, and bending about the s-axis would be the edge condition. So when we check punching shear, there's an option to check both axes separately, and one of those is an end check, one of them is an edge check. For columns 11 and column 8, we have, again, a similar check. If we check to the inside from either face of the column, we have a slab, so that uh, is the check made there. If we check to the outside, we have two sides which are open to uh, just outside of the slab, and those become a corner condition. So we have a 
two-sided critical section for columns 8 and 11. We're going to now focus on column 14 and column 16. So in this case, we have a little bit of a, a difference if we were to compare it with column 6. Again, the program will check the distance from each face outward. And on the top, the right, and the bottom, there's obviously slab there. There's a 10-inch slab. So we at least have an end or edge condition. And when we check from the face of the slab to the left side, that check of uh, 40 inches falls. This is 3.33 feet here. This falls right inside of an opening. So what happens is the program believe, thinks that this is outside of the slab because there's an opening there and the column gets categorized as an end or edge condition. If we look at column 16, we have a similar condition to the left. We have a, an opening which is 40 inches from the face of column to the center of the opening and the same dimension downward. The only difference here is that these openings and this column are now in an 8-inch slab. So the check that the program is making is actually a distance from face to uh, 32 inches to the side. So between face of column and face of opening, that is going to be a dimension of 34 inches. So the check that it's making actually falls short of the column opening and the same thing on the bottom side we're checking a, a basically the check is made right around there and then right here just two inches short of this opening so we'll go ahead and check these columns and kind of see what categorizations the program is using for them and then we'll make some adjustments on how we can treat the openings a little bit differently in our design so the first thing I'll do is I'll go to FEM I want to mesh the structure and we're going to analyze the structure. And I only have one strength combination that I'm going to analyze for. So the punching shear check applies to strength or ultimate uh, conditions. We're going to check this for strength dead plus live. We'll say OK. And the program has, um, or I'm sorry, the model has a live load of 60 PSF and a dead load of 25 PSF say yes to that to save the results and I want to turn off the display of the finite elements the shell elements so we'll turn those off here and using the support line results toolbar and the result display settings I'm going to go here to display the punching shear design outcome and we first need to run the punching shear check we'll go back and reset that and you can see it gives us just a flag whether it's okay no good or exceeds the code if I select the one two three this just gives us some information on stress ratios so this this doesn't really tell us what the condition is we need to generate a report in order to do that so we're gonna go ahead and generate that report I'll go to reports single default under punching shear design we're gonna use the punching shear stress check output And using this output, we're mainly interested in columns 14 and 16. So again, because this check to the left falls in the opening, we expect this to be an end or an edge condition. And again, that's a conservative approach. If I go down to column 14, you can see it's categorized as an end and edge condition. So it's really a three-sided critical section if I was to draw that critical section in on the column, what you're going to see, the program is actually using something that looks like this. I'll turn off my snap tools. So this is the critical section that the program is using for its different layers of critical section, this area. And then if I go in and hatch that, for example, it's this area right here that the program is using. So it completely discounts this side to the left. Looking at column number 16, remember this is an 8-inch column. The opening is the exact same distance away, so that the check is actually falling short of 
the opening on both the left and the bottom side. And if I go and look at that, column 16 is an interior in an edge condition. So the critical section, again, falls somewhere in this boundary right here that I'm outlining. Now, when the program checks the distance d over 2 away from that section, it very well could fall within this opening and that opening, and the program at that point just essentially discounts that distance through the opening when it creates the um, area and the boundary length for the critical section um, at different intervals. So we're going to do two things. I'm going to move this opening, and I'll just use the option here to move in the x direction. So let's move this opening 0.33 feet to the um, to the right, and I'm going to, going to move this opening upward. Let's say 0.33 feet also. And then I'm on, on column 14, I'm going to just move this opening up so that when the program checks from center of column outward, it, it bypasses that opening. So if I move this opening to a location, um, let's just say 0.83 feet upward, we're going to now recheck what's happening. So let's go and... I need to mesh this again because I've moved the openings. We'll rerun the analysis. Okay, I'll close that and we want to check our punching shear and I'll just toggle this again it's going to show us the stress check again so this stress ratio went down this was up around 0.9 for the maximum ratio for I think the S direction and now this says it exceeds code so we have a change in results of pretty drastic change here this was working easily and now it's not working and the question is what's the reason for this so if I go back and create my report We'll go ahead and look at column 14 again. And now column 14 is an interior condition. The reason being is because the check from the left face outward is now slipping, I guess, past that opening. The opening is not in the way, uh, in essence. And then for column 16, we have a corner condition. And that, again, is similar to what was happening here in the first iteration. If I check from face outward, it's falling within an opening, and face downward, it's falling within an opening. The last check we've made is we've taken the opening to the left side of column 16, and we've, we've essentially just moved it towards the face of the column. So the program, when it checks and categorizes this column, it's categorizing it based on a line, not a point. So if a column falls anywhere on that line, at a distance four times h, the program categorizes accordingly. So even though we've moved this uh, moved this opening inward, this is still going to be categorized as a corner condition, and we can see that the stress ratios are identical to what we had earlier. If I go and I check the report, it's still looking at this as a corner condition. In conclusion, we just want to stress that the user needs to be mindful of the positioning of openings near columns for punching shear in Adapt Builder. And when it makes sense, sometimes you may need to create a, a secondary model for punching shear if you've made adjustments um, to the position of openings so that you can take advantage of uh, slab presence on all four sides or three sides where you might have a corner type of a condition. And that just simply means you may you do a save as, a file save as, that model becomes a punching shear model only, and you make the adjustments to the openings. Or if you're not concerned about the movement or the new position of an opening, openings may be fairly small. They may not significantly decrease any accuracy in the slab uh, behavior for like a two-way slab. 
then you could just retain everything within the same model, which is, is commonly done. If you have any questions about the video or about punching shear, please contact us at www.adapsoft.com. You can contact our support group at support at adapsoft.com, and you can call us at 650-306-2410. Thank you.